every piece of technology or for every idea, there's always a hundred reasons why it doesn't work, why mm. you can't do it, or, or an excuse. And that's why I think the leadership's so important yes. because you have to say, look, forget the excuses. It needs to happen, and if you know, and someone needs to drive it through. We need something that, that the government, and I do think it has to be centrally, drives through. Says this is our agenda, and mm. it's up to everyone to basically catch up and and provide the way to to achieve it. You've just got to look at every individual circumstance and, and find a solution that best fits the local answer. Uh, and then you've got to have an overlay of a larger sort of broad energy structure that allows you to sort of work within the trends and the you know, the broader European legislation and everything else. And you've got to try and find a way to marry the two um, you know, in the centre. I do think some sort of big flagship project that the UK government drives through, um, on the back of all the legislative stuff I think we need as well, would, would because it, it, just, it might go some way to altering people's mindsets and realising this is a very, very important agenda item. It's nothing to do with it being a cooperative academy. I think we're misjudging the fact that the people who are actually paying the bills in five, ten years' time do have sustainability quite high on the agenda. And I would even say it's not local, it's more personal to none. There isn't a, a standard anybody's working to at this moment, no, isn't no, no. And that comes back to legislation, that comes back to the BRE starting to knock on deck's door and saying, look, we need to come up with a new, new standards for us to work to. There's no end goal what we're trying to do with the... The, the housing stock, the building stock, we've not got a, a target to aim for. If you're looking at energy, one of the challenges to decentralised energy is obviously being the fact that we have a very centralised energy system and a national grid, which is, we shouldn't <coughs> criticise because it's highly technologically advanced, it's very stable, the lights haven't gone out since I think it's the 1960s or 70s. So to some extent the dynamic is a dynamic that, that has developed because we've got a very centralised nationalised system. The responses to that have to be local because whilst you had very cheap North Sea oil and gas, you could have a very centralised system that has inherent inefficiencies. We also got to look at the resources in the different areas. Um, build wind farms if it's in, in a good resource area. If you're going to do biomass, you're going to start looking at the side and the borders and um, heavily forested areas, but don't have big biomass power stations, 50 megawatts, go for small embedded. There is a real desire to do this. Everybody around, look at all these people, look at the look at the papers every day, look at the government. You know, it is a big point, they are struggling with other aspects, but they realise it can drive economic growth, it can drive jobs. But it needs to be done in a way that it makes our lives better and you know more efficient and cheaper than everybody, you know, having to wrap up warm in their, you know, their their, their vests and jumpers at home, you know, not drive cars, get the bus. It needs to fit within our existing expectation of, you know, of, of lifestyle. And if you can do that, then it will happen. But it does take time. We've got to be patient, but we've got to try and find a way to make it happen. <laughs>